it's me Tariq Akhtar Ansari. In this video, I'm going to talk about RabbitMQ. When do we need RabbitMQ? How it works? I'll explain two use cases where you can use RabbitMQ. Okay. So this video will be the theoretical, but in this video, you are going to get the knowledge when you can use the RabbitMQ and what are the scenario when RabbitMQ can rescue. Okay. So you can solve your problems. Okay, the first thing, what is a RabbitMQ? RabbitMQ is a messaging queue software, also known as message broker or queue manager. Simply said, it is a software where queues are defined to which applications connect in order to transfer a message or messages. So, hope you have understood from this. If you haven't understood, don't be worried. It's nothing but it's a software that manages the queue and this helps us to transfer messages from one application to another application. Okay, this is simple. Okay, now. When do we need the RabbitMQ? Previously, if you want to communicate between two applications, just take an example, publisher and consumer. So here you can see these are the two applications. If you want to communicate between them, what we do? We do the direct connections between them and we transfer the messages. Okay. But take an example. This is written in Java and this is written in JS. Can we do the direct communication? No. So here RabbitMQ can help you, help us. Okay. Now. Take an example, one more thing, when we want to communicate between these two, these two should be available on publisher sending the messages, but consumer unavailable to listen them. Then what will happen? Your message will be dropped. So in this times, what will happen? Your messages will be dropped. So you are going to lose your messages. So this time also RabbitMQ can help you okay, to rescue. Now, if you want to do the heavy work, like you want to transfer to some other places. So you can also use the RabbitMQ. Now, if you want to communicate one to many, you can easily do with the help of RabbitMQ, many to one, one to one, whatever type of communications, okay? Or on different time as well. Now, hope you have understand when do we need the RabbitMQ. Now, use cases, just take an example. What about your organization wants to work with the new internet of things? then you would have thousands. But how do you manage the data of all those devices? Well, this is where a message broker come into the picture. So RabbitMQ is nothing but it's a message broker. Other message broker is also there like Kafka. Okay, but we will discuss only about the RabbitMQ in this series. Just send all your data of those devices towards your message broker, message broker and it will take care of all the processes. Okay. Now the second use case is just take an example. I hope you have encountered this type of scenario. Now you want to do the user registration. So first process what we are doing user service dot registration. So we are registering the user. Now after registrations we want to send him. So send email welcome email then call the third party API for affiliate tracking. Now if user is registering through the direct user or registering through the affiliate link. Okay. So we want to call this also. And now the finally we want to log. Okay. So in this scenario, what will happens? Suppose user registration is working fine, but still user is getting error. We can encounter, we have encountered sometimes. Okay. Why? Because SMTP server is not working. If SMTP is not working, whole process will not work. Okay. So we are getting the error, user is getting the error. So this is the bad experience. But if we use the RabbitMQ, we can easily rescue ourselves from this type of errors or this type of problems. Now what will happen? We will do the user registration and rest thing we will send in RabbitMQ and RabbitMQ will take care of all these things. When SMTV server will back to work, then they will send the emails. Okay, now let me explain how RabbitMQ works. Okay, so here you can see publisher and consumer in between RabbitMQ. Okay, so this is RabbitMQ. So publisher, publisher what does? He will send messages to exchange or to RabbitMQ and exchange will push the messages into the queue. And consumer will consume the messages from the queue. So they don't have the direct connections. So once we have sent the messages, messages will be in queue till consumer will not consume these messages. Once consumer consume the messages and process that messages, consumer have to send the acknowledge back to the queue. I have done. 
okay once done then only the message will be deleted from the queue otherwise that message will remain on queue okay so message dropping will not happen if we'll use the rabbit in queue so just take an example of smtp server which is i have given in the previous slide so now once we have done the user registrations we will send our message okay to rabbit mq and this message will be here so suppose this is the smtp server this consumer is smtp server so they take the messages from the queue and will send the email to the user now this server is not working don't be worry this message will be in queue if another user will register another message will be in queue so once smtp server back in work then he will take one by one all the messages and done and acknowledge to the queue that i have done then only the message will be deleted so no one so our application is not going to crash so email will be sent once smtp server is back so here you can see how we can rescue ourselves so no one is going to get any type of error okay now just taken up just taken up example you have the iot devices thousands of devices connected so you don't have to do the direct connections with publishers okay you don't have to be manage everything your job is just to send the messages into the queue and they will consume all the messages from the queue so exchange plays very important role here so one publisher is enough so exchange will decide it will go on which queue and consumer will connected to queue okay so we may have more than one consumer into the one queue okay we will explain in greater detail when we will start the programming of rabbit mq but as of now just understand consumer can more than one consumer can connect to one queue and they can take the task if we are increasing the load just take an example we have so many data in a queue uh, one consumer is not enough to process all this information so what we do we'll just run another consumer nothing else so it automatically will take the second take the second task and third task will go to this and fourth task will go to this so one by one so this is called the round robin one will take this one and another will take this one when third one this and fourth one this fifth sixth in this way they will take the data and they will process so hope guys you have understand where you can use the rabbit mq so i'm going to show you each and everything using the program so i'll use the javascript programming but rabbit mq is available in all the programming language whatever you know python javascript go you can check out the official documentation i have given the link in the description of so many websites and articles you can read out and you can understand more about the rabbit mq so thank you guys for watching this video